In this video today, I'm going to show you how I clean my Fluval FX6 canister filter and show you how I've got it set up inside of the filter as well. This tank is a six foot water box Clear Pro 7225. It's full of Lake Malawi African cichlids. I've got a mix of peacocks, haps and embuna in here. And it has been running for about a year and a half with not really many issues. I do a water change once per week and change about 80% of the water. And my canister filters, I try and clean them once every three months and alternate between the two of them because I've got one on either side. So today we're gonna to be doing the one on this side. If you're enjoying my content, you might like checking out some of my past videos and playlists as well that I've got on this tank and my other six foot water box tank too. Without further ado, let's get into the video and clean this filter. So I'll just quickly give you a rundown on this tank. I have got a UVC clarifier on this side and one on that side. They're the green killing machine ones. I have got three freshwater AI Prime lights on top of it. And then down here, you will see that I've got my Fluval FX6s in each side of the tank. So we're gonna clean this one today. I've got a towel, I've got this to empty it, and then a bucket to empty the water into. I've turned the canister filter off. The first thing that we're gonna to need to do is we need to close our valves. So we're just going to push them towards us, or turn them towards us to close them. And we close our outlet one and our inlet one on the other side. Now, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to take this little thing off and this is where we're gonna drain our filter from. So take that tab off. We're gonna put this little bit of pipe that comes with the filter onto it, as so. And then we can just tighten it up. All right. We are just going to put our end of the hose into our bucket. So some water is gonna come out, but to get it actually flowing, we need to take out our outlet valve here. And so there's a little thing here that you just hold on to, and you just hold that in and then twist a bit. I find it helps to loosen it and pull upwards. Like that. And as you can see, it's a bit messy, so it's a good idea to have a towel handy. And now because of the pressure, all of our water is emptying from our filter into our bucket and that'll keep going until the filter is mostly empty. Now our filter is finished emptying, we can close our little valve back up and remove this pipe and it will spill a little bit when we take it off, but that's okay. And then I just hold it up like that and get the water out of the pipe and we can get rid of this water because we won't need it again. We'll use water from the fish tank when we're filling this back up, but you just wanna make sure that you don't use tap water to fill this back up unless it's dechlorinated. Before we lose it, let's put our little tab back on here and we can close that back up. We just need to take our inlet one out too. So same deal. We just need to push that button down and twist it a bit and pull up until it comes off. There we go. Oh, it's still a bit heavy, but it is much easier to move when it's been emptied into the bucket. To clean the filter, we're gonna use water from the tank. So I'm gonna get the pump put in here, and then we are going to start draining the tank. And that is going to drain through a hose into the backyard, and we're gonna take our filter out there and use that water that's draining out of the tank and coming through the hose to give the filter media and the sponges and everything a really good clean. I'm gonna turn off everything else, the wave maker, the UVCs and the other filter so that our tank can get ready to be drained. I also am going to siphon some of the fish waste and everything from the bottom, but that's gonna be separate because I use the pump just to get most of the water out and then the siphon I use to put water directly into my laundry sink drain and get all of the waste out. But I'll show you how I do that in a second. Everything is all turned off and this is our pump here that we're gonna use. This is an AquaPro AP3000 water pump so it's just a pond pump that I got from Bunnings and we'll go grab the hose so we can connect that to here and to get this water pumping out. Alright so this is a 19 millimeter garden hose that I have here that I connect to my pump 
and this just runs straight out into the garden. So we're just gonna connect our hose to our pump and then pop this in here. If you have a big tank like this, I highly recommend getting a pump um, to remove your water instead of using buckets because it just makes the process so much faster. Now all we need to do is plug our pump in and turn it on. This here is a little irrigation system that I set up. So if I move this and change this valve to make it so the water cannot come through here as quickly, it adds some pressure to the system and then it starts to spray the plants that I've got in the garden. And it also decreases the flow that's coming out here. And because we want to have plenty of time to clean our filter, I'm going to make it so there's not too much water coming out here. And we also don't want it to be too fast of a flow because otherwise it's going to blast water everywhere. So that seems pretty decent for now and we can adjust that as needed. But let's go and grab our canister filter so we can open it up and see what it looks like. I've got my towel out here with me again and I've also got just a standard kitchen strainer too that we're going to use to put all of our media in and then give it a bit of a wash. The first thing we need to do is we need to undo all of our little clips that hold this together or that hold the lid on. Now it's really vital when you are putting this back together that you make sure that you don't miss any of these because if you miss even a single one of these, which is kind of easy to do, then you will find that your canister filter will leak and it can create a big mess very, very quickly. So you certainly don't want to do that. And also don't put these all the way down because they have a tendency to get stuck and come out and then they're a little bit of a pain to put back in. So it's a good idea just to hang them just like this. All right. And then you just lift your lid off. This is very, very dirty. I'll give you a look. Okay. So as you can see, our sponges are really dirty and they're doing their job because the mechanical filtration, the reason that you put it on the top is because it's meant to catch all of this stuff that's coming out of the tank. So that's good. I've got one that's a bit wider to catch big pieces than this is a finer type of mechanical filtration. But if we have a look at our biological media, which is the part of the filter where all of our beneficial bacteria live that helps us complete our nitrogen cycle, the more gunky and dirty that this stuff gets, the less efficient it is because all of this gunk takes up surface area, which is taking away area for your bacteria to grow. So that can make this not as effective as what it can be. So when we clean our filter, we don't really want to see a bunch of gunk like what I've got on here. This is a sign that I need to clean this filter more often. The other thing our filter also has is it's got three of these trays that you can remove. Normally there is a red thing that goes down either side that connects them together to make it easy to pull the whole thing out at once. But I thought mine were making a bit of noise and rattling and I wanted to decrease the noise and the vibration of this filter as much as possible so I removed mine but that's fine you can just take it out with your hands like that and you'll see that we've got three trays in here we've got our top one which had our sponges in it too our middle tray here and our bottom one the way that this filter works is when it's stacked up like this what happens is the water is going up the sides and through these sponges here. So these are a bit of mechanical filtration that it initially passes through. Then it's going down the top and all the way to the bottom and being pumped up into the tank. So with the order, you wanna have all of your mechanical filtration catching as many particles and debris as you can up the top. Then we have our biological media which is there to house our beneficial bacteria. So that can be things like these ceramic noodles. I also have in here some CCHEM, CCHEM matrix as well in there. And then what you put on your bottom is chemical filtration generally. So this is where you'd have anything like um, carbon, like pyrogen. The reason being is that sometimes these things will take out some of the ammonia and nitrites in the water and you need those to be able to feed your beneficial bacteria. So if you put your chemical filtration up the top, then sometimes that means that you're not going to have as much to feed your bacteria colony. And so that's really the reason for justifying putting it in the bottom. I do have pyrogen in my other filter but I don't have it in this one. I've just got this matrix in here and so I've made some improvements since I last did a video on this. Thank you to everyone who left lots of good advice and stuff for tips for cleaning this. I did it in my bathtub last time and people were quite shocked by that 
test, you can get a thing called a pre-filter, which is basically a mechanical filtration that you put on your intake inside the tank that helps to stop some of this stuff getting into your filter. For this last part here, I've got the... I've got the crushed coral and I've got the, some matrix, but I also have a, just a last bit of mechanical filtration down the bottom. So just gonna tip that out into the strainer and this is a little bit blocked up. So that's not good. My flow wasn't great. That was coming through there. So I just like to leave these on the bottom just to try and catch a final bit of debris and particles in case anything's coming through. But they did get a little bit clogged up. All right, and so that's all three of our baskets done. So now what we're ready to do is to add these back into the filter, but before we do that, we'll just give the inside of our filter a little bit of a washout as well. It might be a little bit hard to see because of the reflection, but this has quite a bit of gunk in the bottom. There is a drain here, but you just can't really see it. So look at all of that, that is gross. I've done really well not to spray myself in the face with water yet, so that is good. Sometimes you will get a little bit of sand build up on the bottom of here too. And so it's a good idea too to regularly unscrew this where your motor is and give your motor a little bit of a clean as well. Caveman Aquatics has a really good video on how to do that. I'm just gonna blast this with the garden hose because there's not any, well, there's not, there shouldn't be much beneficial bacteria living on the sides here. So I wanna get this pump turned off because it's getting too low. So let's go turn this off and we'll just give this a clean with the garden hose. All right, that seems pretty good. Now, let's add our baskets back in. We'll put our one with our chemical filtration and coral on the bottom. Then we've got our biological media. And then lastly on top, we've got our mechanical filtration. And when it's in properly, it should sit nice and flush. Those are all back in. So next thing is let's siphon out some of the waste from the tank, fill this back up with tank water, and we can turn it back on and it'll be all ready to go. I almost forgot. You probably want to give your little, little bit of a spray down as well. So I'll just do that now quickly too. And as you can see, our garden has had a very good drenching. So we've got a towel and we're gonna remove our pump now. When I turned it off, I did just remove it from the water and put it back in because otherwise the suction stays and it will keep draining. Just shake the water into the tank, pop that on the towel. Then we'll go pop our hose back outside where it belongs. Right, I just brought my canister filter back in too, which I'll put over near where it goes in the cabinet. And we can close these doors and get the aircon on. We don't want to be too slow with this because every moment that our canister filter doesn't have water in it, our beneficial bacteria colony will be dying off. So we want to be as quick as we can. And we also don't have much water left in here, but all I want to do is a quick siphon to actually remove some of the gunk and the fish waste from the bottom, which is really important to do. Otherwise, that's just going to cause high nitrates again because all of this creates ammonia, which our filter turns into nitrites. And then nitrates are the last thing in that cycle. So less ammonia means less nitrates ultimately because even though our bacteria colony can handle it and create more nitrates we don't want to get to that point too quickly where we're really high with our nitrates so it's good just to keep on top of the amount of ammonia that we've got. What I do is I have a wave maker here and I'm just going to put this wave maker under the water down here like that and because I've got all of this stuff here called Texas Holy Rock, this is a type of sandstone to raise the KH and the pH of the water, since African cichlids like to have alkaline water. But this stone is very, very heavy, so it's impossible for me to actually be able to move it. But as you can imagine, a lot of waste gets trapped under the rock. So I use the wave maker just to try and blast out some of that waste from in between the rocks as much as I possibly can. Like it's better than nothing. Grab my siphon and I'll get that siphoning first, and then that way we can get on to the waste really quickly after we blast it out. So let's grab the siphon. So, I just keep my siphon in my laundry sink over here and it is connected to the tap so it goes straight down the drain from the tank. And I also have a garden hose here that I use to actually fill the tank back up and they get a little bit tangled up. So bear with me. So we're just gonna grab our siphon out, make sure there's no kinks and pop this end in the tank and we can 
suck on the end and get that siphon going so that it goes down the drain. Our siphon is now siphoning into our sink and we can just go around and get all of this gunk and debris from the bottom of the tank. And so I'll just go around and get what I can see and go under the rocks a little bit as well. And I think someone might be knocking on my door. One second. Okay, that was sweet. There was a little kid out the front and they wanted to know if I had a dog because I think they found one. So that was nice of them. Let's turn the wave maker on and blast some of the gunk out as well. So I just grab it and I just aim it towards the rocks. Oopsies. And get some of that poo out. And it tends to work pretty well. It is better when I've got more water to work with. And I cannot reach the ones on the other side, but I should probably not be lazy and remove this one day and go do the other side with it. But I have found that this tends to be pretty good. And the last thing I wanna do as well before I stop this siphon is I wanna use this to actually fill our canister filter back up as well. I'm going to pop my filter back where it belongs in the cabinet. And so what I've got in here is I've got just a yoga mat and then I've got these little, I think they're like vibration things, pads that you get from Bunnings. And I put each foot on top of one of those two just to help with the vibration that this filter makes. And I found that those helped quite a bit. So we've got no water in here at the moment, but we're just gonna pop it back in and get it in the position that we want it to be in so that each of our feet have their little pad and we don't want it to be touching any sides of the tank. All right, so that's good. We we'll pop our cord back through the back here and we'll get it out of our way. We are just gonna grab the end of our siphon and then we're gonna run this to our canister filter and unkink it so the water flows into our filter. As you can see, now our filter is just filling back up and you need to make sure you fill this quite far to the top, otherwise your filter's gonna have a lot of air in it and it's gonna have a lot of trouble starting. Even though it is a self-priming filter, you still need to have at least, I think it's 70 or 80% of the filter actually full. All right, that's pretty good. Take this out. All right, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now is the part that you do not wanna mess up. We're gonna put our lid back on. And so we're just going to Pop it on as so, and it should fit nice and snug. If it doesn't, you have a problem. Now, we need to make sure that every single one of these that see how it wants to twist to the side. That's why before when I was saying you don't want to pull it all the way down because that can come out sometimes. So you want to keep these in. And we're going to put all of these up and we're going to turn them clockwise and make sure that they're nice and tight. Not super, super tight because you don't want to ruin the bearing or whatever you call it. But the most important thing is that you do not miss a single one of these. I've missed one before and it created a huge mess on the floor because it won't be watertight if you miss one of these. So get them all on. Back, I'm just gonna put them all up and triple check as well that they're all tight and that they're all on. And you know what I could be doing right now is I could be filling my tank up right now as I'm twisting these on. So let's do that actually and then we'll come back to this. I promise we will come back to this. Just got this standard garden hose in here and it is connected to the tap with a tap adapter that I got from Bunnings. You can get these from most hardware stores and so it just means I can turn the tap on and the water will come straight out through the hose and then into my tank. So let's put this hose in the tank and then I just poke this through some of the holy rock, just like that. First we're gonna add two hatfuls of this prime dechlorinator. And so this just helps to take the chlorinator, the, the chlorine I mean, out of the tank. And I just pop that where our water is going in. Then I'm immediately gonna go turn my hose on. It's summer here, so I don't worry about putting it on warm. I just put it on the tap temperature as it comes out. But when it is, in the cooler months, I find that it's too cold and I need to make sure that I put the hot water on so that it matches the tank. 
Now, because the pH of the water that comes out of the tap is about a 7.8, we do need to put some buffer in here so that we can raise our carbonate hardness, so our KH as well as our pH, and keep it more stable around about an 8 to an 8.2. So for that, we are going to use this stuff here. So this is Malawi Victoria buffer and that keeps it between a 7.8 to 8.4, depending on how much you add in. We're just gonna add in eight teaspoons of this Malawi buffer, and we're gonna use our Keeping Fish Simple spoon, tablespoon, no, teaspoon, that Steve uh, 3D printed at the last market day, so thank you, Steve. And we'll just pop it in where the water is coming out, and what I do is I just add four now, and then once it's a little bit more full, I'll add another four. Now, just keep in mind too, the way that I do this is not perfect. There are better ways to do it. So it's recommended to mix this with the water. If you can, you could pre-mix this or if you've got a smaller tank, like with Shelly's, and you're using buckets to add water back into the tank, then mixing this in the bucket is the recommended option, I believe, by Seachem. Now, back down to our filter. Let's get all of these screwed on nicely and then we can reconnect it. And once our tank is full, we'll be able to turn it back on. They're all feeling tight enough. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to connect our plugs back up. I know that my shorter pipe here is my intake, so I'm just going to push that down and that's gonna click on for me. And so as you can see, all you have to do is push down and that's gonna click on and not come off. So that seems good. All right, and then We'll need to open these back up as well to let the water that's in the pipes flow through, but we'll wait until we're ready to turn this back on to do that. And what I'll do is I'll just double check and make sure that this is definitely my outlet and this is definitely my inlet. So our tank is getting pretty full now, so let's add another four scoops of our buffer in. And this time we can put it in front of our wave maker since our wave maker is on. And that'll just help blow it through the water. And maybe what we'll do is while it's filling, let's give this glass a little bit of a clean as well. To clean our glass, I'm gonna use a magnetic cleaner. I use one that's called a flipper. So this one, a flipper max. This glass is 19 millimeters, which is really thick. And so the magnet needs to be strong enough to hold the flipper on. You can get two different adapters. This one here is for acrylic tanks. And I also use this for my tank since my tank is a low iron tank, but I've used the actual stainless steel one as well, which is a little bit sharper to get off some of the really hard green algae but let's just start with the soft side anyway. I actually watched a video by Gallery Aquatica and they gave some really good tips for cleaning your tank. And one of the things that Cam said is that it's just good to go over all of the glass with this, even if you can't see algae in some places because sometimes it is just there and you can see it from different angles. So it helps to do that and then also just look from different angles because sometimes in different lightings, you'll see bits of algae that you didn't see from other angles. So, our tank is looking pretty nice and full now. So let's turn this hose off and take it out. And let's open up our valves back onto our filter so that our water can start running and we can turn our filter back on. We're going to open the inlet first and we're gonna let water rush into the filter so any water that was left in the pipe can run in. And then we're gonna turn our outlet one on. All right. And I'm just gonna triple check that these are all on and I haven't missed any. And let's turn our filter on. All right, we'll see that a bunch of air comes out of it. There are no leaks and it is going to cause a bit of stuff to go into the tank. This is all just stuff that was sitting in the pipes that's being pushed out now. So don't be alarmed if this happens. This is perfectly normal and it's fine. It'll clear up pretty quickly. Water level is, so you just wanna check that too, that your outlets aren't too high, but you wanna have sufficient surface agitation too to oxygenate the water, especially if you don't have an air pump like me. This filter here has just turned off. That is also normal with the FX6s because they're self-priming. What it will 
do is after it's been on for about a minute or two, it's gonna stop, it's gonna be off for a minute and then it's gonna start back up to get some of the air out of it. I have had it before where it hasn't turned back on. If that happens, it's normally because there could be sand in your propeller. And so you either need to take that off and clean it or what worked for me is just turning it off, like moving the propeller and the filter a bit, plugging it back in and turning it on. What you might notice as well is some flashing. So that's when the fish actually swims and scratches itself on the sand or on the rocks. This is normal after a water change too. Sometimes the chlorine in the water can upset them a little bit before it's completely completely dechlorinated so they will do that but if you see multiple fish flashing and you see it consistently for days then that's a bad sign because that could mean that you've got her parasite like flukes. The one other thing I will do as well is I'll clean the outside of the glass because these guys like to splash around and make a big mess and I get a lot of water on the outside here. So I just use an electronic screen spraying cleaner. I just spray it into this microfiber cloth. Oop, there goes out the filter. That's good. The other thing though that I forgot to mention that I'll also do is I normally will just put my hand in and I'll just run it along here and I'll mix the front of the sand up a little bit just to get any dark spots where there are some bits of bacteria that are sitting. And sometimes you might get little bubbles that come up, but that's fine. I've never had any issues with those little bubbles, like little gas pockets. The other thing that I'm going to do too is I'm going to move this wave maker up a little bit higher as well so that it's helping create some more surface agitation on the water. I give these guys a little bit of a feed because they're pretty hungry. Pop that in there. Give them some of their colour food as well. It's now 747 and you can see it's already cleared up a whole bunch. I've just finished giving the glass a bit more of a clean. It's not a super meticulous clean, but it's good enough. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add the lids back on before I forget, because that's really important too, to prevent any of our fishies from jumping out. Then once they're on, what I'll do is I'm gonna upload some of this footage onto my computer, start putting the video together. We'll wait for this to clear up a bit more and I'll show you some footage of when it's all nice and clear and to let you know how long that took as well. So it is currently nine past nine and we're pretty clear. It will get a little bit clearer than this but as you can see the clarity is decent for only a couple of hours. These filters are really really good at getting the water clear quickly. We noticed that when we had to move these tanks from my other townhouse to this one they worked a lot faster than what the sump did in terms of improving the clarity of the water. So this tank is all good for another week. I just thought I'd let you know as well some plans that I've got for future videos. So my river tank that I've got over there it has had a cyanobacteria outbreak it looks absolutely horrendous so I need to fix that I'm going to start my process of getting rid of that bacteria tomorrow and I'm going to film along the way so that you can see I've also spoken to Jack from Mad Aquariums I may potentially be going to go in there and film scaping a tank because Jack is another person who is very very talented at scaping tanks the tanks that he does in there look absolutely incredible so if we can convince him to do that you might need to give him some encouragement then we might get to do that too i may also visit dan from brisbane discus and unbox some really nice beautiful show quality discus too so let me know what you think about all those ideas and if you're excited to see those things i'm planning to go back to atlas aquariums as well finn got some more phantom plecos so we're going to film actually putting those into the river tank too these are all just kind of potential things that i've been talking to people about so hopefully they will come to fruition but we'll just have to see. I thought I'd put it out there though so you have a bit of an idea of what's to come in the future and of course we'll keep doing some of these videos from home as well and giving you updates and stuff on these tanks and how they're going. If you're enjoying my videos please don't forget to subscribe to my channel too and you can hit that little bell notification too so you get uh, notified each time I upload a new video and you don't miss any. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.